Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt and this is CuttingThroughTheMatrix.com You can also find me at AlanWattSentientSentinel.eu on June the 27th, 2007. I don't know if the people out there have noticed, but the spraying is still going on a lot at night too. Night spraying is going on with the the trails underneath the moon, and you wake up in the morning to this mushy haze with lots of rainbow effects around the sun. A couple of weeks ago, in fact, there was a huge ring around the sun, which I understand some of the weather forecasters in the States who claimed was caused by ice crystals. Yes. Sure. We certainly get fed a lot of mushroom fodder and kept in the dark. Everything is science today. The science is what most people's reality is composed of. The scientific expert opinions, the scientifically produced talk shows on television with famous people who give them their opinions, ideas to emulate, things to rebel against, things to look forward to. In the old Greek days when they ruled Egypt, after the Ptolemies moved in, one of Alexander's generals, and became the pharaoh, and whole lineages of the Ptolemies came out of them, right down to Cleopatra and to her son. They called the figure of the young Horus with the short legs, meaning baby Horus, you you walk carefully like a baby, but you think like a man, with his finger in front of his lips, surrounded by the wings of the big hawk behind him. The meaning of that was Harpocrates. Harpocrates is what they called the young Osiris in that position. Secrecy. The finger at the lips signified shh, which we still use the old mystery religion and that's the kind of characters that Harpo Productions gives you to emulate on television the Matrix movie 1, 2 and 3 wasn't really science fiction at all There are always allegories or levels of reality. Up until this point, our indoctrination has been scientifically induced, as I say, through techniques in school, and really from kindergarten onwards, augmented by the media, taken over by media and entertainment, working together. But there is such a thing coming up shortly, as a real virtual you might say a virtual not quite real but virtual it will seem real to everyone in it reality this is being pushed in workplaces of how you'll have simulated people after plugging yourself into a computer and a simulation of you will be there you'll have sentient feelings to an extent you'll have some sort of uh, sense of touch or presence of people near you, other computer-generated images. And that is the world that's been planned for total domination of the mind. There's no battle left when the mind goes. It's all over. Someone else makes the program. And like the later Matrix movie, 
everything that Neo could do was only a matter of choices between different programs as he saw when he met the great architect of the universe as the Masons call him. Mark Bard who reports for different magazines and papers and I've quoted before from also does the register he puts um, comments and columns in the register people should look up this one here from Mark Bard the register uh, published on Saturday 23rd June 2007 it's called Sentient World War Games on the Grandest Scale Perhaps your real life is so rich you don't have time for another Even so, the US Department of Defense DOD may already be creating a copy of you in an alternate reality so to see how long you can go without food or water or how you will respond to televised propaganda. The DOD is developing a parallel to planet Earth with billions of individual nodes to reflect every man, woman and child this side of the dividing line between reality and alternate reality. Alternate reality is abbreviated to AR, which is Ra backwards. Called the Sentient World Simulation, it will be a synthetic mirror of the real world with automated continuous calibration with respect to current real world information, according to a concept paper for the project. SWS provides an environment for testing psychological operations. That's PSYOPs, P-S-Y-O-P, PSYOP operations. The paper reads, so that the military leaders can develop and test multiple courses of action to anticipate and shape behaviors of adversaries, neutrals, and partners. I'll just go over that last part again. They're going to test psychological operations so the military can develop and test multiple courses of action to anticipate and shape behaviors, to shape behaviors of adversaries, neutrals, and partners. SWS also replicates financial institutions, utilities, media outlets and street corner shops by applying theories of economics and human psychology its developers believe they can predict how individuals and mobs will respond to various stressors Yank a country's water supply stage a military coup SWS will tell you what happens next the idea is to generate alternate futures with outcomes based on interactions between multiple sides, says Purdue University professor Alok Chaturvedi, co-author of the SWS concept paper. Chaturvedi predicts Purdue's laboratories for synthetic environment for analysis and simulations, or Seas, S-E-A-S They love these little terms, don't they? Neologisms The platform underlying SWS Chaturvedi also makes a commercial version of Seas available through his company Simulex Incorporated Seas users can visualize the nodes and scenarios in text boxes and graphs or as icons set against geographical maps. Corporations can use Seas to test the market for new products, said Chaturvedi, 
Simulex lists the pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly for a surprise, and defense contractor Lockheed Martin among its private sector clients. You see, there are no... <laughs> the military-industrial complex is a complex, singular, a complex. All the little characters fit together like a jigsaw puzzle and that's why the CEOs can move from one to the other it's all part of the giant CIA the US government appears to be Simulex's number one customer what a surprise however and Chaturvedi has received millions of dollars in grants from the military your tax money and the National Science Foundation your tax money from other foundations to develop C's and you think the science foundations are there to just help humanity, don't you? Chaturvedi is now pitching SWS to DARPA <laughs> and discussing it with officials at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, where he said the idea has been well received, despite the thorny privacy issues for <coughs> U.S. citizens. Quite something, isn't it? Yes, those citizens are such a nuisance, all the little people to the big boys. Here's page two from the register by Mark Bard. Actually, this is also some strife by Mark Bard. From Saturday, 23rd of June, 2007. It says, in fact, Homeland Security and the Defense Department are already using seas to Im- simulate crisis on the U.S. mainland. The Joint Innovation and Experimentation Directorate, they love these long-winded words, of the U.S. Joint Forces Command, the JIFCOM, JIFCOM, J9, in April began working with Homeland Security and multinational forces over Noble Resolve 07. Interesting term. For the high nights, a homeland defense experiment. In August, the agencies will shift their crisis scenarios from the East Coast to the Pacific Theater. Everything's a theater, and all these characters are but the players. Mind you, will all be the players if they get their way with this matrix system. JFCOM J9 completed another test of seas last year called Urban Resolve. The experiment projected warfare scenarios for Baghdad in 2015, eight years from now. Yep, they're going to be home by Christmas, folks. They knew all this before they went in. JFCOM-9 is now capable of running real-time simulations for up to 62 nations, including Iraq, Afghanistan, and China. The simulations gobble up breaking news, census data, economic indicators and climactic events in the real world along with proprietary information such as military intelligence. Military and intel officers can introduce fictitious agents into the simulations such as a spike in unemployment for example to gauge their destabilizing effects on a population. All the the games that they've actually done in real life over the years which were planned that way they're not going to give us and wean us off into another fake reality, uh, which will we won't be able to do, to even detect. At least most people won't even detect they're in it. They'll think it's all the continuation. Officials can also inject an earthquake or a tsunami. Well, gee whiz, they can make that happen anyway with harp they have since the 70s, and observe their impacts on a society. Chaturvedi added, "This Chaturvedi is a great guy. Eh? Chaturvedi, Vedi." Chadu Verdi, great guy. He, he he obviously is a really good psychopath that wants a good pat in the head from his bosses. And it's very obvious he's, he's a, a people pleaser, for a boss pleaser. He's been working hard to, to create this deviant, abnormal, sadistic, mind-stealing system that they were all revolved to be shoved into and getting paid by your tax money to, to make your chains as always Jim Blank Blank 
Modeling and Simulation Division Chief at JFCOM-J9, declined to discuss the specific routines military commanders are running in the Iraq and Afghanistan computer models. He did say SEAS, S-E-A-S, might help officers determine where to position snipers in a city square or to envision scenarios that might emerge from widespread civil unrest. It doesn't specify where that would be, the civil unrest. SEAS helps commanders consider the multitude of variables and outcomes possible in urban warfare, said Blank. Future wars will be as asymmetric in nature. They will be more non-kinetic, with the centre of gravity being a population. You hear this, this terminology? These, these guys have been stuck in the little ivory towers too long, the little Tower of Babel. It's time it came crumbling down. Future wars will be asymmetric in nature. They will be more non-kinetic, with the centre of gravity being a population. The Iraq and Afghanistan computer models are the most highly developed and complex of the 62 available to JFCOM J9. <laughs> Each has about 5 million individual nodes representing things such as hospitals, mosques, pipelines and people. The other C's models are far less detailed, encompassing only a few thousand nodes altogether. Now these nodes are supposed to be people. You're now, you came from a number to a node. I guess we're nematodes or something like that, but here's the nodes here. Feeding a whole Earth simulation will be a colossal challenge. Oh boy, what a challenge for a psychopath, eh? They love these little games. SWS is a hungry beast, Blank said. We see a lot of Blank stuff about this fellow too. A lot of data will be required to make this thing even credible. This this is the stuff we're, we're getting. We're getting fed. Not that most people will believe it because they're already half gone anyway, or three quarters gone, just by the scientific indoctrination and the constant entertainment. This is the next step into the artificial reality to perfect it. Now here's the third page. Alok Chatur Vidi wants SWS to match every person on the planet one to one. Right now the 62 simulated nations in SEAS depict humans as composites at a 100 to 1 ratio. One organization has achieved a one-to-one level of granularity for its simulations, according to Chatur Vedi, the U.S. Army, which is using seas to identify potential recruits. Isn't that amazing, eh? Which means they're using real data about real people in all of this, you see. This is, your, this is a little giveaway here, too. Chatur Vedi insists his goal for SWS is to have a depersonalized likeness for each individual, rather than an immediately identifiable duplicate. If your town census records your birth date, job title, and where you own a dog, SWS will generate what Chatur Vedi calls a like someone, a like someone, with the same stats, but not the same name. Oh, who's kidding who? Who's kidding who? We're really stupid at this level down here, you know. Of course, government agencies and corporations can add to SWS whatever personality identifiable information they choose from their own databases. Well, they've had to get around that, you see, and for their own purposes. And with consumers already giving up their personal information regularly, I'll repeat that part, and with consumers already giving up their personal information regularly to websites such as MySpace and Twitter, as well named Twit, I can tell you. It is not a stretch to imagine SWS doing the same thing. And it's true, they've trained the consumers since the, uh, since the, they came out with the, the shopping cards for shops and groceries and so on. And I'll tell you a little story here before I continue with this last page here. In the 90s, I hadn't been into a huge grocery store ever and Zare's supermarket opened up this gigantic place in Ontario 
and I went in there. I'd heard about it. I only went in because I had to go in. And um, it was huge. It was incredibly... You almost need roller skates to get around in the place. As they take over and put all the little guys out of business, so there's no competition, which is what they do with everything else too. And uh, I wanted some vegetables. And I went up to the... Uh, this is after television programs on the genetically modified food that was on the national television. And up to the place where they had all the vegetables and asked this little girl, I says, do you have any non-modified vegetables? Can you tell me which is which? And she gave me that sort of click, click, robotic look. And, and she was nice enough. She went and got the manager. Well, the manager, this massive monstrosity came over and... Uh, I asked him the same question. I says, can you tell me what's non-modified? And, and he looked really stunned. I'm sure he was genuine. And he, he says, he says, I don't know. I says, you don't know? He says, no, I guess I would have to ask the, the purchasers because they're the guys who, who might know. And uh, he says, to be honest with you, you're the only person who's ever asked. That's what stunned me. You see, we'd all had the same information given over a span of a year, two years, because Canada, we found out later, had been under a secret testing program with Monsanto and the Canadian government to test us as the guinea pigs for the modified foods. And it only slipped out because they were discussing this in Britain, making it mandatory to, to, to bring the stuff into Britain, the modified vegetables. And that's when we found out that we were already using it for 10 years. So this is all over the papers and everything. No one a year and two years later had ever asked. No one, no one had asked. That's what's scary. That's what's really scary. But in that same store, I looked at all the checkout counters and it was just like experiments I'd seen for rats at school where they put them for little channels and they, they pull levers and things. And there's all these people, one after the other, pulling out cards and, and swiping it. And, I, and at first, I, from a distance, I thought, well, why are they putting their hand past that little scanner? Because that's what they're being trained to do. The card was almost irrelevant. It was a training procedure to get them used to just passing their hand, which one day will have a chip in it. They're already getting trained to do the motion. And so it will become easy, you see, quite a natural thing for them. Everything is training step by step. But I digress from my story here. And, of course, they give up all their data and, and ID, even to people who phone them up, all these, these salespeople that phone them up for surveys and all the rest. Of it, they just give up their data. They blab off all their data. It's, it's incredible. And so read that last part again from the register. Of course, government agencies and corporations can add SWDS to whatever personal identified information they choose from their own databases and for their own purposes. And with consumers already giving up their personal information regularly to websites such as MySpace and Twitter, to, and also to a whole host of other agencies, it's not a stretch to imagine SWS doing the same thing. See, we're all trained step by step. There may be hooks through which individuals may voluntarily contribute information to SWS, Chaturvedi said. Hooks, you hear the terminology, there may be hooks which you may contribute voluntarily. In other words, you'll be conned by some polling system or something like that. SEAS bases its AL thinking, or A1 thinking, could be AL too, thinking on the theories of cognitive psychologists and the work of Princeton University professor Daniel Kahneman, one of the fathers of behavioral economics. Oh, here we go. This guy works with uh, the Pentagon, obviously, and Princeton uh, Department of Psychology and Economics, etc., worked hand-in-glove since the 1930s with psychological warfare games, including the big scam they had with the, 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 the fear and terror of the, the Wells talk or play that they used and wore off the worlds over the radio back yonder and then the people in panic leaving cities and towns thinking the aliens were invading that was a psycho that's been admitted now it was a psychological operation so here's Princeton again eh? and Daniel Kahneman one of the fathers of behavioral economics 
Understand that you can make people do anything. They'll beg you, like turn off their water or control all their food. It's, it's really it takes geniuses to develop that, you know. Even though they were using it in ancient times when they took over cities, they cut off their water into the city, and they'd also cut off their food supply and sit back and watch them starve and and die of thirst. Nothing changes. Chatter Vedi, as do many AR developers, also cites the work of positive psychology guru Martin Seligman, known too for his concept of learned hopelessness as an influence on C's human behavioral models. The Simulex website says, if a bit vaguely, C's similarly incorporates predictive models based upon production, marketing, finance, and other fields. But SWS may never be smart enough to anticipate every possibility or predict how people will react under stress, said Philip Lieberman, professor of cognitive and linguistic studies at Brown University. Experts make correct decisions under time pressure and extreme stress. They're not necessarily optimum, but work, said Lieberman, who nevertheless said the simulations might be useful for anticipating some scenarios. Jayaf Combs Blank That's Mr. Blank there I don't know if it's secret or he's really called Blank Maybe it's his expression Maybe he's a simulation He agreed that SWS, which is using computers and code To do cultural anthropology Cultural anthropology, very important for controlling huge populations It does not include any hard science at this point Ultimately, said Blank, the guy to make decision Is... The commander, the commander. Oh, spooky, it's spooky. Hmm. So there you are. There you are. That's the matrix system, which is not in its working phase, its, its trial phase. It's already. This stuff is old. Everything we're given and it's come out and released to the public is actually old stuff. Old, old stuff. And the public are kept thinking they're on the cutting edge by press releases and media releases and scientific uh, newspapers, magazines. That's how you control the people's thoughts by giving them the impression that they're on the cutting edge. Well, in actuality, whatever is released to us was known about a long time ago that's why they could always plan each stage of the future you should also check into Mark Bard's other websites he does parallelnormal.com for information which you don't generally get in other quarters now here is another piece of information which is aimed at the young and it's from the Economic Times I think it's part of the it's from the India Times actually part of the the Times news group and this part is the Economic Times India Times This part's from Shelley Singh, Times News Network, Sunday, June 24, 2007. And this is your typical hurrah type. Really an ad, how they promote science. There's never a, a, an ulterior position or stance to take on it. It's always a hurrah type deal. That's just a handout, is called, from the scientific communities. This given to newspapers. It says, care to eat chips, not the potato ones in colourful packaging and different flavours, but the digital ones, infrarich variety. For starters, swallow this if you happen to be among the select VIP members. So there's your old snob appeal. The VIP members of the Badger Beach Club, one of Barcelona's hottest night spots. You'll not only be in the company of some very exclusive people, but also amongst the few with an implantable microchip. The chip was club owner Conrad Chase's idea of offering a unique identity to the club's VIP patrons. 
And I think they also opened up one in Holland, in the same group, this Badger group. Badger Beach Club, BBC. Uh-huh. And what they don't tell you in this blurb I'm giving out here is that Mr. Chase, of course, belonged to the National Security Agency. He worked for that for years, the NSA, the ones that monitor all conversations worldwide and have been doing it for a long, long time. This is obviously an experiment. It's not news, really. It was out a year ago, I think, this information with this character, Conrad Chase, and his BBC clubs who are promoting chips to the young to get into hot nightclubs. Sex sells, you see, and young fellows full of hormones follow their noses to where they're told the hottest babes will be. And it's so trendy and so chic to be in with the VIP crowd as they give it snob appeal. It says, slightly larger, larger than a grain of rice, the chip is used to identify people when they enter and pay for drinks. It is injected by a nurse under a local anesthetic. It is an RFID tag, radio frequency identification. RFID tags are minuscule microchips which listen for a radio query and respond by transmitting their unique ID cord. Most RFID tags have no batteries. Now listen, it says most RFID tags have no batteries. It doesn't say all. They use the power from the initial radio signal to transmit their response. In other words, they're passive, supposedly. However, what they don't tell you is that they also can generate their own power from energy, the energy of heat, and it's called body heat. At the Badger Club, if a special tag reader is waved near this, the arm, a radio signal prompts a chip to transmit an identification number which is used to access information about the wearer from a database. Otherwise, the chip is dormant, but its applications are wider. Now, you can also have this chip loaded with uh, credits to buy drinks and so on. It's then deducted that each time you swipe your arm when you collect a drink from your account, which a chip keeps track of. And this is um, what the young fellows are trying to impress the young girls with, these lovely chips. They even have nurses in, in, in um, special vans outside these clubs to give them the, the chip, the, the injectable chip. And they're being monitored for much, much more, and they don't know it, of course because anything the NSA is involved in is very nefarious indeed. But as I say, sex overcomes common sense and sex sells. And these guys will keep swiping their arm and impress the young girls there until their, their chip doesn't read anymore. And then they've had their chips when the account's closed and the girls will walk off to someone else whose chip is working says here, the Badger Club members are not the only users of such geeky stuff. Very soon most people might have some kind of a chip implanted in them, or most people, yes they will too, as a means to identify, deliver medicines, monitor health, all the here we go again, it's all for your own good, give access to secure areas and also functions as a digital door lock. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Just recently Kodak filed a patent for edible RFID chips designed for monitoring a patient's gastric tract. The chips are covered in a harmless gelatin which eventually dissolves. These RFID chips embed deep in the body can be read by a scanner. They had all that stuff in the movie Fortress with Christopher Lambert where you swallowed this thing when you went in and they could actually induce pain in you too when required because don't think they haven't thought of all of that since the military-industrial complex are the ones behind it all. And the Verichip uh, really is just as far as I'm concerned. It's like all these big military-industrial complexes. Uh, they're, they're just um, a front for the military-industrial complex. They, they advance all technologies, and then, of course, they set up their own international corporations to make sure they guide the technology. You can't give technology to just anyone, you see, so you make sure you guide where it goes, which is where exactly they planned it to go. 
Kodak says that similar radio tags could also be embedded in an artificial knee or hip joint in such a way that they disintegrate as the joint does. Warning of the need for surgery. Why not just give them the surgery? Attaching tags to ordinary tags to ordinary pills could also help nurses confirm that a patient has really taken their medicines as ordered. Do you hear that? They took the medicine as ordered. Now, the nurse in one flew over a cuckoo's nest. Excellent movie, well worth watching. Would love this. She, she would rep her alley. Very cheap. Another American company, that's the one I'm telling about, CIA backed, provides chips to hospitals to manage patients. Also provided chips to the Badger Club. What a coincidence, eh? The CIA backed at Verichip, um, just happens to be testing it out on teenagers through, uh, what they claim is a private club, the BBC, the Badger Beach Club. And it says an Israeli company called Given, G-I-V-E-N, Imaging. Very similar, almost the same as Graven Image, isn't it? Given Imaging. How have the mighty fallen, eh? Has developed PillCam, a tiny two-sided camera the size of a large pill which sw- patients swallow. It's been used for gastrointestinal endoscopy tests to diagnose disorders of the esophagus and the small intestines. It takes pictures and sends them wirelessly to a recorder worn on the patient's waist. The images are downloaded to a computer for diagnosis. Each capsule costs $450. All this is part of what experts call intra-body wireless communications. In this, more than one chip could be embedded in humans, and these chips relay information to each other or to a receiver without interference, just as a radio can be tuned to different stations. So in diabetics, for example, it's always the use, the use unfortunate to sell their, their gimmickry. An implanted glucose level reader in one part of the body can communicate with an implanted insulin pump elsewhere. With such new innovations, it will be more common in the future to have some wireless devices which are ingested, implanted, or simply attached to the body and linked to a network. It's still early days, ha ha ha, but a wireless future with edible chips is clearly looming large on the horizon. Ah, boy, oh boy. So it goes on and on as well, get programmed. That's that part there, this whole... Handout. This is a paper handout to to newspapers. They just pirate what they're given by the big future think tanks, and that's how we're conditioned. A sort of rah rah, uh, excited type. Uh, let's let's be all for it deal, without us thinking about wait a minute the consequences of this, uh, and we are always the last to know the real reason. Of course, that's the world in which we do live. It's quite, it's quite something, and it's not nice. It's not a nice world at all. The world that the big control freaks are creating is a hell. The loss of sentience, and even the choice of having it being taken from you, is is a form of murder. It's murder, in fact. This great brave new world of Huxley, and you can see where it's all going with uh, parallel and virtual realities by the military-industrial complex. Now, Huxley was intensely involved with all all, all of this stuff at Tavistock Institute. They did an awful lot of experimentation with people's brains. Literally, they stuck wires in them and and did uh, Delgado-type experiments on them back in the 50s and 60s. Could make them stand up, talk, walk, sit down. And... um, it's all well documented uh, material, and Huxley's speech at Berkeley, which is on my site, you should listen to it. And listen to how this man has an audience, an audience chuckling, an Ivy school, audi- a school audience, of course, who were all going on to these particular different areas. And uh, he says, you know, most people are not really happy anyway. So what's wrong? What's wrong? And. and um, Using drugs on them or, or different kinds of realities, you see. What's wrong with, with isn't it? So, what he's really saying is, well, from our elitist point of view, we're, we're humane. We're putting you out of your misery by giving you fake realities. That's what he's really saying. 
in the most pleasant way. Most pleasant way, almost in a in a nineteenth century old English accent of the elite. And uh, we're well underway now to this. Well underway. As I say, the last 50 years especially of accelerating cultural chaos as they break down the old culture and brought in the new atheistic type to make us all think that we have no other thing beyond us than just science and life and death and um, Darwinism. We dehumanized ourselves by accepting all their propaganda and their expert testimonies that we were just just animals, you see. The whole idea, and it's always been corrupted uh, once they start, but the whole, whole idea of initial religions was always taking to free mankind and to at least after hundreds and maybe thousands of years of tyranny under old empires, old ruling families, religion initially was to give the individual a choice between obeying the ruthless elitists of their day or obeying the rules of what they thought was their deity. That was the first time that happened in history, especially with Christianity in its early, early phase. First time where people had a choice of obeying ruthless leaders and evil tyranny or saying, wait a minute now, what does my conscience say to my deity? That's what it initially did. That's why it was taken over so quickly by the authorities and used against the public. Every religion is the same. That's been successfully removed and you have a new age wishy-washy religion given by the elite who promoted it from the beginning so that you um, you don't want to look at the negative at all psychologically you're already disarmed you're all told to be happy, happy, happy like little children your whole life long and you'll pay anything for a, 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 an experience of the supernatural and those are the candidates who will go into the great claims that are made when the chips come out for brain implants and no doubt will be an opera to promote it. It's a great thing. Things are very predictable. The only ones who are not predictable, according to the first article I read, are few, but they are not quite predictable. There are random factors in all of this brave new matrix world coming up random factors which they can't foresee which will come to the fore but really we shouldn't get into it we shouldn't get that far and your biggest problem is not just the elite it's the bulk of the population that you know support the elite because whatever the elite do, they will go along with it. That's what's called democracy. The mob can be counted on to do what the elite want them to do. It's only the individuals that cause the problems. In fact, the elite couldn't survive at all with their corrupt monetary and commercial system. Never could for thousands of years without the quiet consent of the majority. So the majority are just as much of a problem as the elite. And when you really look at the whole scenario, there are too few good people, too few normal people left in this world. That's the big problem. There are many happy psychopaths in all strata, right down to the bottom of society, who go along for self-gain with the whole agenda. They have no problems recruiting the monsters to work all over their camps across the planet for torturing people. Where do you think these creatures come from? 
They're bred by the ordinary people and found to be psychopathic. That's where you find them. There are too few good people alive today. And by being good, I don't mean you obey the rules. Everyone who is classified as good obeys the rules, even if the rules are terrible. You still be called good because culture is flexible. It's moldable and shapeable and can be directed, which the culture creators are well aware of. Being good, in the sense that I am talking about, is having a conscience. A conscience upon which you must act. So there you have it. You have, and you all know, the agenda. You all know that we have choices as to whether to go along with this agenda as life is so bad that we'll be so happy to just jump headlong into this virtual reality, this fake system where we'll have a utopia a seeming world of bathing in cotton wool while all the time we're really a form of energy like the Matrix movie doing all kinds of monotonous jobs but not knowing it like Huxley said most people aren't happy anyway What's wrong with altering their perceptions? Very humane of him and his kind. Of course, what he didn't say was, since he and his kind had always been in charge, he'd never given us any peace to be happy, to be content for any length of time. The system isn't designed to give you peace, just the opposite. It's meant to keep you on edge, never knowing if you'll be sick tomorrow and lose your home because you can't pay a mortgage you know the gauge till death or the measure till you die and the banks flip it again or lose your home that you're renting lose your job or have economic depression or war or the usual plethora of fear factors that are thrown at every single generation because they haven't given a single generation any peace it's not designed to allow you to have peace yet by the building up of tension and uncertainty in this world they have changed so drastically many times they can get us to adapt step by step into their big mouse trap, where we will be so happy to grab the cheese when it promises us such relief from all our worldly cares. Youngsters are already being trained that this is a great thing. All their heroes, all their superheroes, and their comic books have chips in them. They're all part cyborg. And there's no parent there to tell them that it's a complete fantasy. It's a planned fiction. Because the parents don't know themselves. There's not enough wise older people to pass on the wisdom. If the parents don't know, the children certainly won't know. The fantasy is a great method one of the best methods to indoctrinate into adaptation a world that has been planned by people who know the sciences those who know the sciences work for the military industrial complex of the world there is only one
Now many people will love this new form of socialism, this upgraded, updated form of socialism, where it will seem that all your cares have been taken for, uh, care of for you by the experts, and you can play forever, but nothing will be real. On the other hand, we have uncertainty if we live in a real world, we were in charge of our own thoughts, hopefully, because many people don't want to be in charge of their own thoughts. That's why they, they're addicted to fantasy. It never occurs to them that what is entertainment is actually their programming. The silence and their own thoughts can make them panic because they're not used to it. For those who can handle thinking and the enjoyment of being able to reason and think, the time is running short because the war really is stepping up on them, the ones who are awake. And I don't mean just awake to their part in the system, their time period changing. I mean those who understand the overall picture past, present and future. There's a joy in being awake. There's a joy in breaking free from all the indoctrination. There's a joy in understanding the esoteric side of things. And being able to apply them to what is happening. Just a quick note here. I've had lots of people asking where they can find the article I read from The Guardian, the complete article, a 90-page document, from the Department of Defense, the UK division, and you'll find it in my article section. I've made sure you'll see what it is. It was listed under the DCDC, which is Department of Concepts and Doctrine Center, which is the think tank for the Department of Defense, also is the one really that gives out the big future scenarios for the NATO group of countries I'm adding UK um, Department of Defence to it to make it more clear to people what it is so look into the article section and you'll find it on my website now it's funny how synchronicities work the people who wake up and go beyond the fear stage of my goodness is just my little world that's changing suddenly my normal is moving on to something else and I've got beyond that phase and realized your normal was just what was approved by the elite for a time now gone by for those you'll find that synchronicity, synchronicities do occur another day I was thinking about mobs and I was thinking about how down through history you have one mob being stirred up by a psychopathic elite who understand the sciences of sociology and mob rule. So they stir up mobs to fight other mobs. And uh, those who are part of a mob, what they're really doing is projecting all the the terror or fear within themselves and hatred and projecting it on to others who are just the same as themselves generally it's like two military groups doing battle the ordinary people on the battlefield are just the ordinary people from either side who are told to kill each other 
and who, use, who are fed propaganda to make them do it. They don't profit from it themselves. In fact, their whole society is always changed, regardless of who appears to win. And yet it continues, the same scenario continues over and over. Revolution is the same way, where the big mob, who often have lots of grievances, genuine ones, they think that this is going to create a utopia for them and all their fears will dis- disappear in a just society. They forget that their leaders generally will be the psychopaths who will then have power over them even more so. One tyranny for another, the frying pan into the fire. It reminded me of an old poem written by Yeats. Because sometimes poetry or even song, which is just poetry and song, if it's done properly, is an easy way to get, and a quick way, an effective way to get a complex message across in few words. That's the best kind of teaching. And Yeats, I think he called it the great day. And if I remember, he said, Hurrah for revolution and more cannon shot. A beggar upon horseback lashes a beggar on foot. Hurrah for revolution and cannon come again. The beggars have changed places, but the lash goes on. In other words, it's a new day, same shit. Same thing. New boss, same shit. Because the psychopaths are always in control. And they always say and do the right things until they're in power. And after I was thinking about that and Eats came back to me, I got a letter from someone who emails me, someone with a few dogs in the States. And she was telling me about a poignant thing which obviously would stick with anyone. She says there was a sad summer story that occurred here on the mean streets of New Jersey towards the end of the raging Vietnam era. The terrible event definitely depicts the scarring of America that was planned and you have mentioned. A young woman of 18 years was raped by about 30 men on the streets of Metuchen. I don't know if it's Metuchen, Metuchen, but it's New Jersey where she lived. I remember when that happened. I was really young at the time. Then gasoline was used and she was immolated. She was set on fire. She was murdered by a mob because she had a boyfriend, a marine, who was in Vietnam. I'm sure Moloch was well fed. She was on to say, I was 14 years old living in the Ramapo Mountains when I read about it in the newspaper while home on vacation. The dead girl was a classmate attending the same school I was in in Massachusetts. We knew each other and were the only two from New Jersey. I remember calling the headmaster and telling him off the news. She goes on to tell me how some, just a few, of this elite crew, because they were elite bunch of the left-wingers, who thought they were left-wingers, I'm sure, Opposing it all, because mobs are mobs, you see, either side. Their thoughts are never their own. And they project their hate onto others. She said at the end, my friend's name was Margot. She was tall and pretty, and she could write. I wanted to be like her. There was a beauty in her sadness. She loved Yeats. 
had some type of synchronicities. She was elegant with a neck like a swan. And yet she was sacrificed in futility by the mob because they projected their hate of something else onto her. That's the problem with mob rule. And the mob, as the high masons have said, can always be counted on to do their dirty work for them because the mob are indeed truly the profane in all ages. It's interesting, I think, that Yeats, who himself, I believe, was a Mason, probably a lower Mason, because everyone who's anyone in the last couple of hundred years has put out there, Germany's a Freemason. Not that they, they understand an awful lot at that level. But Yeats did uh, wear a ring. He had a ring with a hawk and a butterfly on it. The hawk is a predator. And people love predators. At least a psychopathic crowd do. That's why they have them on their coats of arms. And if you went to ancient, ancient history, even in Sumer, and the uncovered buildings with the frescoes on them. And the elite of all ages, down through the ages, because it's the same elite really, you'll find pictures of them, drawings with their, on their horses with their hawks on their arms. You see the hawk around Horus as he sits in the position of secrecy or Harpocrates. Yeats wore the ring with a hawk and a butterfly because you see we humans have different sides to us we have emotion and we have logic this is an old battle which is often epitomized for the exoteric crew and to left brain, right brain male, female but you see completion of the perfected person used to in ancient times meant someone who didn't deny either but didn't let either rule those psychopaths use what they think is logic emotion is simply a tool to be used on people beneath the ordinary people but they themselves do not feel those emotions they feel excitement and the power of conquering uh, that's how they get off in life. Domination. Uh, sadistic. The lesser psychopaths or sadomasochists who worship the, the sadists above them wishing they were up there. They love the predator. So the hawk symbolizes logic straight to his target. The butterfly, though, symbolizes, as each knew, a crooked road of intuition. And he said himself that wisdom is a butterfly and not a gloomy bird of prey. Our lives are not meant to be some format, some computer format from birth to death. Where you're born, you go to kindergarten, you go to school, you go into a job, you get trained, you work, you may or may not breed, you pay taxes, you buy, you consume, you, you buy insurance for your burial, you're a good citizen. No, that is a system's format, that's not a living, it's not called living, that is the land of the dead. That's the land that the psychopath has created. 
it's also the system which many people will fight to keep, never realizing it was never theirs. We're supposed to have time in life to be like the butterfly, which does, which goes all over the place, but it knows where it's going. Intuition pulls it on. Intuition is your link to something higher and beyond this We've got to stop projecting our own fears and worries and hatreds onto those people over there, whoever the new target may be at any time and any era. The mob wants everyone to be the same as themselves. They have a control freak mentality within them. They don't want someone being different, dressing differently, looking different, speaking differently, or having different customs. That is also the MO of those who want a global, rigid, structured, planned society. What we need is a new way, a different way, one way which is out of the control of the elite, is outside their formatted think tank projections of the future, where they project our reactions to everything they plan to do. We must not react the way they expect. We must go past them, beyond them, over them and around them, and eventually we have to push them all out of the picture because we can't go on in this way of predator worship and inhumaneness to others because they have told us where they're going to take us into a matrix where there'll be no more you I don't speak for the majority of people because I know the majority will like socialism in a fantasy reality where even the programs are made by others for them and they won't have to worry their pretty little heads. But it's not for everyone. And the ones outside of that are the ones to whom I speak. The elite couldn't do anything without the consent of the majority. They count on it. They're symbiotic. But there are many people too outside of that who know there must be another way. And our intuition guides us. from Hamish and myself and it's a very hot day here very muggy, very hot and with the rain that was here last week the mosquitoes are all cheering like crazy because they breed like crazy when it's wet now it's humid and hot so from Hamish and myself we're going to try and keep cool. It's good night. And may your God or your gods and your intuition go with you. <laughs>